Hey guys, this is Mitch with Fine Point CGI, and today we're going to talk about how to create a Resident Evil inspired investigation system. So we're going to go through the process of planning out what we're going to build. We're going to talk about how to actually set up a proper rotation system where you can actually have a mouse offset and stuff like that. We're going to talk about how to actually set up a basic event system. So when you click on your sub item, it will actually spawn in your inventory and your inventory will notice that that has happened. And we're gonna talk about how to make it so that you can keep both your sub item and your base item. So if you have, for instance, in our case, it's gonna be a chest and a key. I wanna be able to keep the chest even after I've found the key. So we're gonna be able to keep both items. We're gonna be able to delete the old item as well, and we'll make that nice and flexible. That's what I have in store for you guys today. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to actually plan this out. And if you guys want, you could just jump ahead to the next timestamp and you'll basically skip all of this planning. We'll get straight into coding. But I always like to plan things out as I kind of go. So let's design this out and then we'll go from there. So first things first, when we want to do an object investigation system, Basically, we need to open our inventory and then we're going to need to basically say, okay, once we have an item, we can right click on item. And then we're gonna be able to instance that item. And we need to hide our inventory like that. And then from there, we're gonna get into our, basically a state, okay? So we'll have a, in investigation state and i know i i know how to spell investigation that's infestation apparently i google doesn't know how to spell investigation either so basically we have open inventory right click on item we're going to instance that item then we're going to hide our inventory we're going to be in our investigation state so inside of our investigation state Yeah, I spelled it right this time, so I guess I'll just come into here. There we go. And we'll throw this guy up here like this. Inside of our investigation state, we're going to have a click to drag system, and then we'll have our investigation system. Now our investigation system is gonna be pretty simple. How that's gonna work is we're basically just going to check And then we're probably going to need to have a spawn. Inside of our spawn system, it's gonna be pretty simple. We're basically just going to spawn our item, scene, and then we're gonna check if there's any sub items. And then if any sub items exist, we will spawn those sub items. I'm gonna to have to make this much bigger if I'm gonna be doing this like this. So there we go. And then we'll go to our end. We'll grab a little end block here. There we go. And that's basically how our spawn system is going to operate. Now for our investigation system, it should be pretty simple as well. So what we'll do is first, I'm gonna drag in an end just cause I don't wanna have to research for that. But first we'll have two, two signals mouse entered and mouse exited like that and we'll have a we'll have a mouse entered and a mouse exited and what that's going to do is going to inform actually I should probably put this like this there we go so if mouse over item and if mouse click, then we will spawn our sub item. Then we will add our sub item like that. We're gonna need to make this a lot bigger because this is gonna be actually a bit bigger than I expected. So we'll drag this guy down here. So we'll add our sub item and then we're gonna do a quick check if 
remove base item question mark and if so then we will delete our sub our base item drag this guy in put this down if not we'll just clear it and actually i'm going to say add sub item to inventory and then this guy will clear like so and this guy will clear as so. And there we go. That's basically how this is going to operate. Our click to drag system will be pretty simple. If I zoom out a tiny bit, we'll just put this down here. It'll make life a little easier. Put this guy at the top. What we're going to do is we're going to say get mouse current position, get last mouse position, rotate object by mouse position minus last mouse. And then it'll basically just loop back like that. And then actually I'll probably check here is mouse still down question go like that and i'll just duplicate this bad boy bring this down here if mouse is not still down and we will end and that's basically the gist of our object investigation system unfortunately it's going to take a lot more work than just this but that's basically the gist of how this is going to operate so with that being said, let's go ahead and build. All right, so the first thing we have to do is we need to actually upgrade our project to the latest version of Godot 4. So if you guys remember when we left off on our C-sharp horror game, we were actually on Godot 4 release candidate. I think it was six or seven. And now we are on stable official. So that's really exciting, but hopefully they haven't done too many changes to break everything, so let's find out. So I have it built here. Let's click on script, and it opens up in here, so that's not a good sign. Let's close that. Let's go to editor, editor settings. Let me see if my editor settings are set up correctly. They are, so why is it opening up with the wrong thing? Let me click build, and it doesn't even build, so that's not a good sign. I have some error calling signal timeout. Oh, let me see. Yeah, it just won't build at all. Let me open up in file manager here. I have a bunch of old CS projects and one that was built here. Godot.net 4.0, okay, or game C sharp. I wonder if we're having some linking issues here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna kill these guys. So I'm gonna come in here. I'm gonna remove my C sharp solution all the way up to my CS proj. I'll get rid of that guy. I'll close Godot. I'm going to delete my dot Godot as well and let's see what happens if i reopen this so we'll grab godot engine here we'll reopen godot horror game c sharp and now it's going to re-import all my assets all right now we'll come in here snap it to your guys's window so you guys have your window fully set up and you'll see that my build button is gone so let's come let's see let's come over here to level bsp let's just attach a script let's just attach a c sharp script this is basically just going to tell godot to regenerate our um, solution and our CS proj. So hopefully that'll solve our problems. So we'll do that. And you can see Visual Studio Code came up. So that's a great sign. So let's come back over here and let's take a look at this. So we'll right click, detach our BSP script, and we'll find that BSP script wherever it went. I'm going to have to hunt that down. There it is, level BSP. I'll remove that bad boy. And then let's see what happens if I attempt to build. So we'll hit build. All right, so we have a few failures here. The typer namespace generic six DOF joint 3D could not be found. Are you missing an assembly reference? So we'll double click on it. All right, so we have generic six DOF joint. Generic six DOF joint. So it looks like they added a capital D instead. So it looks like here's another one. Actually, what is the difference? Six, generic six. Oh, they lowercase the OF instead. So that'll get you real quick. 
Get World 3D, Get World 3D. So it looks like we're gonna have to run through and clean these up. So we got capital X, capital Y, capital Z. I have a feeling we're gonna have a lot of problems with compiler errors today because of this. So let's come through here. Right. All right, let's see. Transform dot basis. It looks like it's capital B now instead of lowercase b. And this is one of the big struggles that you're gonna run into with working on beta software is that they're gonna change the entire language definition sometimes and it can really break your stuff. So head collision object. What was this originally supposed to? Was it a Godot object? Object is equal to get collider. Because we do have an object like this, but I wonder if I was pulling a generic object or if I was attempting to pull head ray cast, head race class, colliding, get collider is of type. We could probably just do node, or is that not gonna return a Godot object? So can I implicitly convert Godot.Godot object? So it's actually Godot object now. There we go. And then we'll scroll down here to get world 3D and X, capital X, capital Y. I'm assuming that the previous tutorial, because we did this exact tutorial for the GD side, I'm assuming because of the format is lowercase, so it probably just handled it. Cannot convert type variant to surface. I am casting it. Okay, I figured it out. It took a little bit longer than I expected, but basically we need to get back to OBJ as a surface. So this looks like it is the Godot variant OBJ, the actual object that's inside of that variant object. So we'll do that. And then we still have dot X, dot Y, and dot Z here as well. So we'll do that real quick. Let's see, where else do we have any issues? We have them right here. Wish they did this before we got this far into the tutorial series, but that is the risk that we take by doing a tutorial series on beta software. All right, now we come back here, we hit build. It's gonna definitely fail. Yep, let's go to our surface section, CSG mesh, CSG mesh 3D. Go, we'll build again. It's probably gonna fail. We've got a lot more failures to go through. Navigation agent 3D dot target location doesn't exist. So dot target position does. So it looks like it's dot target position now. So that's not ideal, but that's all right. We can update that dot get next path position. It looks like instead of get next position dot X dot Y dot Z. Target location dot target position. We'll grab that for this guy. Get world 3D. I probably should be using Visual Studio because Visual Studio would probably do a lot of this for me, but get world 3D. And this is actually not even being used anymore. We could probably remove this since we're in our enemy script. The name player behind wall doesn't exist in current context. Well, I mean, I guess it, yeah, that's fine. Dot target position, target position. All right, now we're gonna hit build. Still fails to build. R, capital G, capital B. And I'm sorry for this guys. I didn't expect them to completely redo all of this in the latest version. So that completely bricks all of this, which is really unfortunate. There we go. So now we have it building. Let's hit play. Let's see if it builds. Awesome. Cool. So now it seems to be back to normal. Good. Now we can actually get on to the actual tutorial. So first thing we have to do is we need to actually build out our investigation base level. Okay, so what this is going to be is it's going to basically be a investigation system scene that allows you to rotate around an object or at least rotate an object and be able to view it from different angles and light it 
individually from your actual game project. So what we'll do is we'll come up here, we'll go to scene, new scene. We're gonna click a 3D scene. We're gonna right click on that bad boy and we're going to go to add child. And then we are going to add in a camera 3D. And that camera 3D is gonna allow us to actually visually see what our object looks like. And I'm gonna give it just a slight tilt like that. And the reason why I'm doing that is it's gonna give us a lot more flexibility that way. Because if you look at an object perfectly um, on the Z axis, sometimes it can get hidden and it can make the user get a little confused. So a lot of times I try to make sure I just give my stuff a little bit of a tilt so that way they know it's 3D instead of it being a 2D image. Next, we're gonna set up our environment. So I'm gonna click on these three little dots. I'm gonna add a sun to the scene. I'm gonna click on these three dots and add an environment to the scene. So that way we have some kind of lighting. And now I'm going to set up our actual rotation. So there's gonna be an object in the center of the screen that's basically going to say, hey, um, let's rotate around this object. And basically we can instance objects underneath that uh, base to actually rotate that object, if that makes sense. We're gonna right click our node 3D. We're gonna add in a child node and we're gonna add in a node 3D. We're gonna name that as rotation around base and then we're going to right click it add a child node and we'll add in a mesh instance 3d we're going to click on empty and we will add in a new box mesh and that's just going to give us a cube and the reason why i'm building out a cube is it's just going to give us the ability to actually see our stuff being done it's basically just something for us to test with now we're going to click on our node 3d and rename this to investigation base scene and i'm going to grab my directional light 3d and i'm going to rotate it so it more aligns to my actual camera that way i just have it kind of aligned up and it just kind of fits a little bit better you don't have to do that but it's just something that would be nice to have so now we need to set up our ability to rotate our object so what we'll do is we're gonna right click our investigation base scene. We're gonna attach a script and we are going to name it investigation base scene.cs. We'll hit enter and that's gonna open up Visual Studio Code or Visual Studio depending on whichever one you use. Now in general, I use Visual Studio, uh, not Visual Studio Code, but I must've switched it over for whatever reason. I don't really remember. So we can basically code with this. I think that that's fine and we can go from there i am going to check to see if i already have an investigation base scene because it says that i have a member called ready already and i don't believe that for a second so let me hit build and it seems to build okay so i don't know if that's just visual studio code being funky or something but it's a little unhappy with me there but what i'm going to do is i'm going to come in here and we're basically going to say hey when your mouse is down, go ahead and allow you to basically rotate your object. So we'll say if input dot is action pressed, and we'll need to come up with an action. Now, if we take a look at our actions here under project, project settings, input map, you'll notice that we have a left mouse button click, which I'm not a big fan of that. So let me actually grab this real quick. And let me come here, paste, and let's see if I actually have, okay, so I don't actually have anything in here using this. I think I probably just set it at one point in time for a factor for something like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this to left mouse button down. We'll create a left mouse button down and a right mouse button down. And that's gonna give us a lot of flexibility. Something that I don't know if I like about how we have these structured is I feel like calling it throw, for instance, is probably less as useful as left mouse button down. Though, that being said, it could be useful if you need a specific name for something. But I kind of prefer just having it as left mouse button down. We're going to add an action called right mouse button down. And then we'll basically just set that as well. So we're gonna right click, hit okay, and that should do it for us. We're gonna click close, reopen our script, and say if left mouse button down, then 
we'll go ahead and set up some code. Now we're gonna need some Booleans here and we're gonna need a mouse offset. So the first, we're gonna need a Boolean. We need basically need to say, hey, if the user presses the left mouse button, that means that they are clicking and grabbing the object. So therefore we're gonna allow us to rotate. So we'll add in a Boolean for that. So we'll say private bool is rotating. And by default, that's gonna be set to false. And then we're also going to need some form of offset. So I'm going to say private vector two mouse offset. And we'll make that equal to a new vector two, like that. I think Godot is just getting funky with this. So I might switch over to Visual Studio if this keeps up, because I'm not sure if I'm gonna like having these these little underlining here, but we'll come in here and we'll say, if our left mouse button is down, then we are allowing us to rotate. So we'll say is rotating is equal to true. And then we will set our mouse offset. So mouse offset is equal to get tree dot root dot get mouse position. And that's gonna pass back our mouse position. Now I know what you might be asking. Well, hold on, so why are we doing this, right? And I'll show you in one quick second. So what we'll do is we'll say else if input dot is action just released and we'll pass in our left mouse button just like that. And then we'll say, is rotating is equal to false like that. Now, something that I made a mistake on is input dot is action pressed should probably be is action just pressed. And the big difference is if you have is action pressed, then our mouse offset would get set every frame and that's gonna cause a problem. We don't need that when we're trying to handle um, rotating an object in 3D space from 2D space because we wanna keep track of our offset. So this has to happen one time. And then when we let off and click again, then we can reset our mouse offset. Now, once we get here, we can actually just check if we're rotating. So if is rotating, then we can go ahead and rotate. So mouse offset is equal to get tree dot root dot get mouse position minus my mouse offset like that. And then we can actually start rotating our object. So get node, node 3D. And I believe we called it a rotation around base. So we'll grab that guy, dot rotation degrees plus equals vector three, new vector three, mouse offset dot Y comma, mouse offset dot X comma zero, multiplied by, I'm gonna say 0.4, though you could put something else there if you'd like. And then I will set my mouse offset equal to get tree dot root dot get mouse position, just like that. Now I know what you're thinking. Okay, this will work, right? But what are we doing? Well, let's walk through this nice and slowly. So, First thing that we're doing is we're checking if your mouse is down. If it's down, then we are getting where our mouse position is for our mouse offset. And then we're going to come down here. We're gonna say if is rotating. So if we are rotating, then we are going to get our mouse position minus our mouse offset. And what that does, if I open up paint like so, if our mouse is here, and our object is here, we're getting the difference between these two guys, okay? So when I move my mouse this much, let's say, so I move my mouse to about here-ish, what it's gonna do is it's going to relatively move my point to right here, okay? So if I'm moving my mouse up here, it's gonna relatively move my, my uh, object relative to where my mouse is. Whereas if I didn't do it that way, and I had my guy here, if I just clicked right here, as soon as I clicked, this guy would set his rotation equal to the distance between here and here. And then this character, this object would spin around basically 
to match where this guy is. Whereas here, it does it relationally because I'm taking this object and I'm minusing the distance between them, if that makes sense. That's basically how that works. So now if we hit Control S, we Alt Tab back into here, we hit play on this guy, it's gonna pop up and say, hey, save your scene. Let's go ahead and save it as investigation base scene.tscn. And we're gonna let this guy run. I have a fail to build project, so that's not good. So let's see. Vector2 does not contain a definition for X. So let's take a look. That's because I did a lowercase X. So it's capital X, not lowercase X. Let's try that. So we're going to try that now. Still failed. Multiply operator cannot be applied to operands vector3 and double. So the reason why it's upset is because this is a double. This is a vector3. And in C sharp, you can't multiply vector threes like this. So what we'll have to do is we'll have to control X. We'll paste that guy in here and paste that guy in there. And the reason why I wanted to show you guys this was basically GD script does a lot of things in the background that you don't really see that C sharp doesn't. So doing something like this basically is synonymous with doing it out here in GD script. If you multiply it out here, this is basically the same thing but it's just something to keep in mind. So now we're gonna hit Control S, we're gonna come over here, hit play. All right, now we're gonna click and drag, and you can see that we can rotate our object. Awesome, easy enough, cool. So now that we have this going on, now we need to get it so that we can actually zoom in and out because one of the nice things about having an investigation system is being able to zoom in and out and being able to look at an object closer. So what we'll do is we'll head over to our camera. We're gonna right click that guy, add an attach in a script to him, and we will call it an investigation camera. So we'll type investigation. And then we're gonna come in here. We're gonna basically nuke all of this because we don't really need it and having it just kind of pollutes our code. And we will first have two variables at the top. We're gonna have our zoom speed and our zoom direction. So we'll say private float, zoom speed and we're going to make that equal to something small like 0.2 and we will make sure we throw an f to say that this is a float and then we'll also do our zoom direction so private vector 3 zoom direction and we're going to make that equal to a new vector 3 and we'll say 0 comma 0 comma minus 1 and that's just going to give us a flexible little connection basically that allows us to kind of mess around with it. Also, I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna export this guy out. So that way you guys can use this in the future. As always with all of my code, you guys can actually download this and use it in your own project, of course. So we're going to hit enter twice and then we're gonna say public override void underscore input input event and we'll pass in that base input event. Now, what this is gonna do is this is gonna run anytime your user presses anything on the keyboard or mouse or anything. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna check if our at event is a input event mouse button. And then we'll come in here and we'll say input event mouse button. Mouse event is equal to at event as input event mouse button like that. And then we can basically just check to see if it's the proper event index. If event dot button mouse event dot button index is equal to mouse button dot wheel and in our case i'm going to go with wheel up like that and basically what we'll do is we'll translate our uh camera by our actual zoom direction multiplied by our zoom speed so we'll type translate which basically just moves our object zoom direction multiplied by zoom speed now here's something to keep in mind this is a vector three, this is a float. So if you remember, you can't multiply a vector three by a float. So we need to either A, multiply it by a new vector three, 
zoom speed comma zoom speed comma zoom speed like that or we could come in here and just make this into a vector three zoom speed or we can create an adapter function for this and i'm going to do a utility function to just kind of handle this for me so i'm going to hit new and i'm going to type utilities dot cs and i'm going to come in here I'm going to grab my public partial class right here and i'm just going to make a public class instead so i'm just going to copy this guy i'm going to paste it do this public class utilities like so and then i'm just going to come in here and make a function to do this multiplication for me so i'm just going to say public static vector three multiply vector by float and i'm going to pass in a vector three and i'm going to pass in a float value like so and then i'll come in here and i'll go equals pointer and i will basically just return a new vector three and i will say vector dot x multiplied by multiply by value vector dot y multiplied oops capital y multiplied by multiply value and then vector dot z multiplied multiply by value and that should about do it now it says namespace or name could not be found if we just do quick fix it should just say using system dot godot and that should solve our problem so once we have this, that's gonna basically allow us to have a nice one line, well, technically two line, because I hit enter, so I you know, made it into a second line, but it'll be a nice one line function that basically just does this. And it's extremely important to create code that makes sense, that is useful. And what i mean by that is if you are building out um a big project a lot of times it's better to have a utility function to do something than to litter your code with a bunch of garbage so it's easier for me to come in here and just go instead of multiplying all of this guy out and creating this funky thing i could just say translate utilities dot multiply vector by float and i can just pass in my vector so i could say zoom direction comma zoom speed like that and that will basically do it for me without needing to have any of this fancy garbage that i had earlier i could just do that and that's going to make it a lot easier to read than to see all that additional stuff and then if i ever need to change my multiply by vector for whatever reason let's say i wanted to change it so that it adds them instead or something like that i have one place that i can change that logic right here and now all we have to do is do if we zoom out. So I'm gonna say else if, we'll grab this guy right here, copy it, paste, mouse button, dot wheel down. And then we can basically just grab this bit of code here, paste it, and we can do minus zoom speed. And that should allow us to zoom. So now if we save everything and then we go back to our project and we hit control s and then we run it we should be able to use our mouse scroll wheel to zoom in and out so if we zoom in and zoom out and there we go now you're basically 70 or 80 percent of the way there to see to actually having a godot like a uh, camera controller because you can see here you can rotate around something and then you can use shift to pan and you can zoom in and out so really all you're missing is the panning and you have pretty much everything working as expected so that's not too bad now something that i would look at is i would want to move my camera up just a little bit so i get a little bit higher view on my object and that's more of just a personal preference thing i would rather have my object down here than you know up here but it's up to you guys on how you guys want to do it so there we go, easy enough, awesome. So now that we have this, we're going to need to do a slight refactor of our inventory system to get this all to work out. So the first thing that we have to do 
is we need to get it so that we can actually spawn in our objects into our investigation base scene. So we have uh, ourselves a cube here, which is cool, but it's not exactly useful, right? It, it exists, but it doesn't really show us how we can actually investigate an item. So we're going to set up our inventory so that way we can click on an item and have it actually show up in this scene. Let's go out to our inventory scene. So we'll come in here. We'll go to our, I believe it's under scenes. We're going to need to refactor this as well to make our inventory system into a module. But that's something that we could do at the end of this tutorial. So we'll double click on our inventory system. Scroll down here to where we're doing our process check. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to look for where we are clicking click button show if last bounce button click hover over let me see do we have any other input in here i don't think so i think we just have it in this process so what we'll do is we'll check if input dot is current action just pressed and then we're going to press our right and i believe we called it and i believe we called it if we come over here project project settings right mouse button down so let's copy that hit close and let's paste this in we'll say if input button right mouse button down is pressed then what we can do is we can basically just instance in our stuff so we'll first say if hover over button does not equal null then we can go ahead and basically just drop our stuff into our investigation object now we don't actually have an investigation object in our inventory if we head over to our scenes and we go into our inventory scene so this whole section is going to get moved by the way, but if we take our inventory under UI inventory right here, we need to actually add in our investigation base scene. So we'll come in here, we'll grab this TSCN, we'll drop this guy in here, investigation base scene, and then we'll hit control S, we'll tab back into here and we'll say get node investigation base scene and i'm going to go ahead and and fetch it as i believe we called it investigation base scene now i'll double check that real quick yep that's correct and then we'll say dot show object and then we will pass in our hover over button dot and i believe our hover over button if we go to definition is an inventory button if we take a look at that we have an inventory item so we'll pass that in so we'll come in here scroll back down to here dot inventory item and then we will hit semicolon now we actually don't have anything called a show object in our investigation base scene so let's head over and build that out so we'll come in here and we will say public void investigate show object like that and then we'll take in some form of element here okay and in our case it's going to be an item so we'll bring in an item and we'll put in item we want to go in and make sure that we show our object so we'll type show like this and that's basically just going to make sure that our investigation scene is actually shown and then next we should just instance our object so we'll check to see if item does not equal null then we will go ahead and just make sure that if our item dot resource path does not equal null and that our item dot resource path does not equal empty then we can go ahead and instance our stuff. Now, I know you might be thinking, well, why don't you consolidate these two ands? And the reason why is because sometimes I've had experience where if it is null, it will attempt to check this guy here. And then you get thrown a null reference exception. So a lot of times I just embed it in. It makes it a lot easier, and a lot easier to use. So now we just have to load our item from our resource. So we can say 
packed scene. Scene is equal to resource loader dot load, and then we can pass in our item dot resource path. And that will basically allow us to bring that guy in as a pack scene. And then we'll need to cast it as a packed scene like that. So that way we can make sure that everything's happy. And then we have to instance it. So we can just say node 3D instance is equal to scene dot instance, instantiate like that as a node 3D like that. And that should work for what we're trying to do. Now, all we have to do is add it to our rotation around our base. So we'll type get node, node 3D, and grab our rotation around base. Now, I believe it's called, if I remember correctly, rotation around base. So we'll copy that, and then we'll paste that guy in. And then we'll basically just say dot add child, and we'll pass in our instance, like so. And now if everything's been done correctly, we should at least be able to get our stuff to instance. So if we come back here, we go into our inventory, we hit play, hopefully everything will load correctly. Okay, we'll click add, we will right click. We didn't get any crashes, so that's a good sign. It could be that this back piece is actually causing a problem. So let's see if we come into our remote inventory and we hide our panel. And there we go. We have our object, but I don't think it actually has. Yeah, it doesn't have anything under our objects. So I'm assuming, so I'm assuming we have a bug somewhere, but we'll have to take a look at what it is. So first things first, when we add in an item, what are we adding? So if we go back to our inventory here, we take a look at it real quick. And we scroll down to the bottom. I'm adding a button one, health potion mega.tres. So let's take a look at that real quick. And you can see that we don't have anything in our resource path. So that's our big problem. So let's go ahead and create some new items for us to work with because I don't really wanna mess with what I have here. Although technically health potions, this whole section was more of just like a teaching implement, but I will just create different resources so that way we have something different. So let's come down to our test item.tres. Let's duplicate this guy like so, and then let's call it chess combined. And then let's come up here to chest combined. And we'll stick with this icon, that's fine. We'll name it chest. And I believe we have zero through three for our ID already filled up. So we'll go with four. Now we're gonna need to create some kind of um, scene to instance. So let's come up here, let's go to scene, new scene. And let's basically go into here and hit new 3D scene, let's right click add in child node and let's add in a mesh uh, 3D like so. And we'll click on here and we'll just go ahead and drop in a capsule mesh 3D. Now, once we get up here, we can basically just instance this object. Now I'm gonna go ahead and call this an inspection object base. Now, technically speaking, um, the way I want to structure this is I basically want to have an inspection. I guess we should probably not call it inspection object base. We might just want to call it inspection object. I'm kind of thinking this through as I'm talking to you guys, and I'm wondering if I should just call this inspection object. I think I'll call this inspection object. And what we'll do is we'll take this guy, and we will hit control S and we'll just call this inspection object and we'll click save. And basically what I'm gonna do is every object is gonna kinda inherit this scene, okay? So basically this object will inform the rest of our other objects, if that makes sense. We'll just come into our chest combined here 
and we'll grab our inspection object, which if you come here, you can see, we'll click on this, we'll hit Control A, copy it, paste it in here, Control S, go into our inventory, Control S, let's click on our add item button and actually let's update that guy. So if we look at code here and we scroll down to where we are loading our actual stuff, we can actually come in here and just add in our, if I remember correctly, it was chest combined. So we'll copy that guy. We'll grab this guy, paste it in and paste it in. Now, something else you'll notice is if we click on our panel here, we had to hide it the last time. So we should probably make it in code so that we already hide that object. So let's head to our inventory side and let's scroll to where we actually are instancing those objects. And you can see here where we're showing an object. We'll come in here and we'll say, get node. And in our case, I'll just say control node like this. And I will pass in the location of our inventory. Now, in my case, I really don't like how this is laid out. I think we could probably get away with adjusting this layout to be a little bit better than what it currently is. So in my opinion, I would almost like to right click this guy, add in a child node, add in a control node, drag this guy up here and then drag all of this into my control node and then just call this inventory menu or something like that and hide our investigation base scene because we don't want that to just exist everywhere in our scene. We just want it to be there when we need it. And I'm going to come in here and adjust some of my C sharp code because I can almost guarantee you that for instance here, we're grabbing just our panel. So we're going to need to adjust that. So we'll need to add in inventory menu just to kind of keep all of our stuff copacetic and keeping it happy. So we'll just kind of do that. We'll copy this guy and we'll take a look for anything else that could possibly be causing a problem. So we've got mouse area 2D, mouse area 2D, get node investigation base scene. This should be fine. Mouse 2D. And I think that will work. We'll have a crash if it doesn't. So we will try it and see if that works. And hopefully if we come to our right mouse button down, we can get node control and we can just grab our inventory menu dot hide like that. And since we're hiding our inventory menu, we should probably also make it so that we can actually unhide our menu. So how can we do that? Well, we could have a Boolean that just says, if inventory is hidden, then show it. Oh, or if it's not hidden, then hide it, right? But if we do that, that's only going to handle this one case. And we should always try to code with flexibility in mind. So since we're going to be building a crafting system, we may want to have a mode switch that says our inventory system is now a crafting system or something of that description. So we might want to make our stuff a little bit more flexible for future use. What I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll up to the top and I'm going to add in a public enum and I'm just going to call it states and i'm going to add in a couple of states i'm going to add in the inventory state and then i'm going to add in the investigation state and then i'll come down here and i'll just say private states current state and i'm going to make that equal to dates dot inventory and then when we come down here, we can basically just set that up. So we can just say, if hover over button does not equal null, hide our stuff, current state is equal to states dot investigation like that. And then up here, we can just check for our state. If our current state is equal to states dot inventory, then we will do this bit of code. Else, if current state is equal to states dot investigation, then 
we can go ahead and show our inventory menu and then hide our actual investigation object. So we can grab this guy, paste it. We can type show. And then if we need to do any cleanup, we can actually, you know, set that up here. And then we can just set our current state to inventory like that. Now it looks like I misspelled inventory, which is pretty common for me. So let me grab this and say I N V N T O R Y. And let me just kind of update that across the board because I can't believe that I spelled it wrong to begin with. So we'll come in here and we'll paste and we'll paste. Go. That should allow us to toggle between these guys and show and hide our menu. Now we also can come up here and we can check to see what our state is. So if current state is equal to states dot inventory, then we can run all of this code right here. And we'll just wrap these guys in parentheses like so, and then control shift P format document, and that'll format all of our code just to make it look a little bit nicer. But that's basically going to give us the ability to come in here, refresh our screen here. And then you'll see if I right click, it'll hide and show our stuff. And that's basically the goal. So now if we click add item and we right click, you will see that we now have a capsule and a cube, which is awesome. I know that that was a lot of stuff but at least we got to this point. We are now instancing our item, but we have one big problem. We still have our cube here. And what happens if we instance one of these guys again, what happens? Well, if we look at our remote and we go to our inventory and our investigation base scene, and we look at our rotate around base, you'll see that we have multiple instances of our inspection object of this guy. We have three of them because we clicked it three separate times. That means that our scene's not being cleaned up when we delete it. So we need to make sure that we do that. So how do we clean up our scene when we're instancing stuff? So we're gonna head over to our inventory system here and let's take a look at our investigation base scene. And right here, when we're doing our show object, we basically need to go in and remove any sub objects that might be there. So we'll come in here and we'll just say, if get node node, and we'll pass in our rotation around base like so. And then we'll just say dot get child count. And we're basically just going to check if that's greater than zero. And if it does have more children than zero, then we can actually just delete the children. Now in Godot, unfortunately, there's no easy way to just go and delete all of the children. You need to do something like a for each loop, like for each var item in our object. So our get node rotation around base dot get children then we could basically just say item dot queue free like that and that'll basically handle it but here's something that you should definitely do if you remember we have a utilities class right here so what we should do is we should just create a utility for this a lot of times in games we need to delete the children of objects and it's always a good idea just to have a utility function for this let's just do a public static void and we'll say remove children and we'll pass in a node object like that and then basically we'll just grab this bit of code here copy it paste it and we should be good to go now get node does not exist that's because we are, need to do in here we could just pass on our obj like so and there we go and now all we have to do is we can check if our child count for rotation around base is greater than zero and then we can basically just say utilities dot remove children and then we could just pass in our node so we'll just grab this guy copy it paste and there we go and it should just take it 
and that'll solve that problem and it'll make our code easier to follow because we have a utilities function. So if we ever need to change how we remove children, we could just do it right here and it'll affect our entire project project wide. And that's always a good idea to set up. Now let's go ahead and test this. So we'll head back to Godot here. We're going to refresh our scene and we will add an item. We're going to right click and it didn't seem to work. So that's not a good sign. Ah, so I think I figured out what was going on. So you can see I have two investigation base objects here. Let's get rid of one of these guys. And then let's try running this one more time and seeing if that's what it was. So we will hit play. Click, right click, and it just shows our cylinder here or our capsule shape. Awesome. So now that we have that working, let's get our actual investigation system going. So the idea behind the investigation system is that you can have an inspection object and then underneath that inspection object, you can basically click on a sub object and have it appear in your inventory. So what we're going to do is we're going to head over to our items scripts. So let's find that real quick item.cs right here. And we're going to add in a sub item. So let's come in here. Let's copy this guy paste and then add in a public item and we'll have a sub item get comma set right here. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and come in here and we're going to make another item. So much like how we have our chest combined, let's actually grab this guy, control duplicate it and call it key. So our chest is going to have a key kind of embedded in it, if that makes sense. So we'll come down to our key.tres and you will see that we have a name. So we'll name it key. We'll put the ID at five, our resource path. I'm going to keep it at inspection object.tscn because I want to use this as my key and I will use my chest combined and I'll actually create a separate item for that specifically. What I'll do for my key, I'm going to rotate this guy 90 degrees like so, and I'm going to right click my inspection object. I'm going to add in a child node and I'm going to add in a node three, and I'm going to add in what's called a sub item. Now, every single object that has a item underneath it is going to have a sub item node underneath it. And that's just by design on my end. So that way I can actually, you know, use this for multiple objects. So I'll hit control S. I'm going to duplicate my inspection object and I'm going to name it as chest.tscn. I'll come up to my chest.tscn. I'm going to change this to a cube like so. And I'll take my key which is called inspection objects. So let's duplicate that and call it key. That way we actually have a key item. It'll make things a little easier for nomenclature. So we'll just change this to key. I'll drag this guy in, drop it into my sub item. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate this 90 degrees and I'm gonna pull this forward just a tiny bit, right about here. And then we'll scale this guy down like so. So you'll see that by doing this, I have a sub item that is exactly where this inspection object, this key is located. Now I can delete my inspection object because I don't need it. I'm going to rename this to chest. This is not necessary, but I just want to name it for, you know, ease of use. And same thing with my key. I'll rename this as key just for my own use. Now, if I go to chest combined .tres and I change my resource path from inspection object to my chest.tscn. Let's grab that, change it, and then let's click build. And what build is going to do is it's going to build our project. It's going to add sub item to our project. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to drag my key.tres into my sub item, and then I'm going to open up my key. I'm going to change the resource path to my key.tscn. I'm going to paste that guy in. And then I should be hopefully good to go. I don't have a sub item for my key.tres. So for my key item, so I'm not super concerned with this. And we don't have to worry about our quantity or stack size or any of that. Um, that gets handled by our inventory system. But I will set it to one just so that it is set up semi correctly or semi how I feel like it should be set up like that. And now. I'm going to come in here and this is where things are going to get complicated. First things first, 
we need to actually come up with an interaction system for our chest, for our actual sub item. Now, that's something that I should have done before and I didn't even think about it, but that's okay. We can clear that in a second. We need to actually come up with a way to show and hide items underneath our other items, if that makes sense. So we have our inspection object base and our inspection object base basically allows us to spawn our initial item. But once our initial item is spawned, it needs to actually go in and spawn any children object that may exist. And that's where the investigation object kind of comes in. So we have, if you look at our investigation base scene, that just handles our base scene. We actually need to right click our inspection object, attach a script, and let's call it investigation object. And we're just gonna do a regular node default right here. We'll click create and it's gonna create a script here. And what this is going to do is it's gonna allow us to actually control everything in our base object. Now we probably don't need a ready and a process, but we'll get rid of those in a minute. Let's just take a look at what we wanna do. So basically when this object gets spawned in, we want to have it spawn in objects. But we wanna make sure that we make this in a generic way. What that means is that we need to house an item right? We need to actually hold on to our own item. We need to know who we are. So we'll say public item, current item. We also need to know if we're over top of our key item. So we'll say bool over key item and we'll make and by default, that should be set to false. And we're going to need some kind of event handler to say, hey, we found an item. So we'll say public delegate void found item and then we're going to pass in a item item and there we go so now we have an event that we can actually use now in godot you actually can do this as a signal like that and that'll basically tell godot to show that in the signal menu i don't know if you guys have ever used Godot events before with C sharp, but basically providing that it wants to build, let me see if I blew something up. And it looks like Godot itself likes to have the last name event handler. So let's take a look at that. So we can say found item event handler, and then we can try that. There we go. And it has compiled. So you can see if we look at our node, when we click on a node and we go to node, you can see there is our signal. So we can actually just use that if we want to. Now, in my case, I don't really need it to be like that. So I could have just gotten away with having it as not a signal and it wouldn't have mattered. But in your case, you may want that feature. Now we just need to handle our spawn code. Now we could do it on ready, but the problem is, is that our item is not going to be there at the time of spawning. Because of the way Godot works, we're going to need to create a function specifically to handle that. So we'll say public void spawn and we'll pass in an item, item like that. And then we'll say current item is equal to item. And then we'll check if our item dot sub item does not equal null then we can go ahead and actually spawn our item. So we'll just come in here and literally just spawn it. So we'll say packed scene, scene is equal to resource loader dot load. And we'll pass in our item dot sub item dot resource path. And that's gonna spawn in our sub item. And we're gonna say as a packed scene like that. And then we can just instance our item. So we will call it an investigation object is equal to scene dot instantiate as a investigation object. And there we go. We're pretty much good to go. So this should in theory spawn our sub item if we have a sub item. So if we head back to our base scene, when we actually show our object and we come in and we instance our stuff, we could basically just take our instance and run our spawn code. But now we have to take this and change it from node 3D 
to an investigation object. And that means that we will need to cast it as an investigation object. And now we can just go into our instance, dot spawn, like that. And it's going to ask for me to drop in a item. So we'll pass in item like that. And that'll basically allow us to set up all of our sub objects and our objects items. Now, if we've done this correctly, if we go back to Godot here and we come in here and we add in into our inspection object, the actual inspection. I really should rename this to inspection object instead of investigation object, because this is different. But we'll take a look at it in a second. So we can either rename this as investigation object instead of inspection, but we'll burn that bridge when we get there. We open up our key, we add in investigation object, we add in our chest, and we do the same thing, investigation object. Again, should have done that in the beginning, but that's okay. That is fine. So once we have that, if we've done everything correctly, we go to our inventory scene, we hit play, we hit add item, we right click, you will see nothing happened. So that leads me to believe that something is a slight miss with what we're doing. Let's take a look at our chest combined dot T-R-E-S. It is passing chest. Chest is coming in here. It does have the correct script, I believe. Yes. So that's correct. Does it have a sub item? It does the key.tres. Key.tres does have the correct resource path. So in theory, this should actually work. Oh, I forgot to set it to be the child of something because if it's not a child of something, it's not going to work. So that's what's going on. If you take a look right here, we're actually not setting a child. So when you instance something, it has to be on a child of some kind or else it doesn't exist in the Godot stack and it never gets actually rendered. So let's get our node and we'll do that as a node 3D. And then let's call it, I believe we called it sub object. Let me double check here, sub item, not sub object. So we will make that quick change, sub item dot add child. And we will add our OBJ as our child there we go and so now we can go ahead and attempt it see what it does if i add an item i right click there we go awesome so now it's spawning our cube and it's spawning our actual capsule shape as well now the capsule shape is going to be the sub item that we have to find so we basically need to set up some kind of system to detect our mouse position and detect if we've actually entered into our objects. And that is where Godot's signal system is going to kind of take over. It's going to make things a lot easier on us. If we close this and we take a look at our chest, we need to add collision to this object. And we also need to make it into a different type because if we look at what we're inheriting from, we're inheriting from node 3D. That's great, but Node 3D doesn't allow us to have collision and you have to have collision for this to work. So we need to change this type to a character body 3D. And then we can just right click on it, add in a child node and add in a collision shape 3D. And we'll just add in a box shape, something like that. And then we're just gonna do the same thing to our key. So right click it, change type, character body 3D, right click, attach a child, node add in a collision shape 3d and let's make it capsule shape as well we might as well just do it to our inspection object since our our base inspection object just kind of exists so we'll just add in a collision shape and we will re change the type to a character body 3d something like that and i'm going to leave it like this just to kind of remind us hey this object doesn't have collision we need to add collision to it that'll give us a lot more that'll make sure that we don't make a mistake later in our coding adventures once we have this we need to change our actual code to inherit from character body 3d like so and that should help us with handling any issues that we might be having now, once we have that, we need to actually set up the ability to relay data when we hover over our key. And what I mean by that is in our spawn here, we need to detect if our sub object actually 
is being hovered over. And thankfully, because I did a character body 3D, it has a signal called mouse entered and mouse exit. So we can actually just use these two to our advantage. And we could just say, okay, I want to connect these guys and I want it to work. So all we have to do is come in here and grab our OBJ dot dot mouse entered plus equals. And we don't have a function that can run with this. So let's create one. So we can just have a private void sub object entered like that. And then we can just set our over key like that. And we'll set that equal to true. And then we can subscribe to it. So sub object entered. And then we could do a subscription to when we exit our mouse. So obj dot mouse exited like that. And we'll just say sub object exited like so. And then we'll just grab this guy. We'll come in here, private void sub object exited. And we'll do over key item is equal to false. Now we can make this a bit easier by just printing our sub object if we're over it. So we'll say entered sub object. And then we could just copy this and come in here and say exited sub object. And I'll fix the spelling real quick. There we go. And hopefully that should work. So now we can just come in here, go into our inventory, hit play. We'll spawn an item in and it doesn't seem to work if I hover over it. So let's see what's going on here. So if we take a look at this, get node of item at child obj dot mouse entered. That's fine. So the question is our chest and key does have collision shapes. So what that leads me to believe is if I take a look at my inventory, something that happens a lot inside of Godot, if you go into providing that Godot allows me to, I think I might have found a bug with Godot. I'm clicking on the actual 2D, but it won't let me go into the 2D view. That's interesting. I might have to reboot Godot. It's being really funky, so I'm gonna be right back. All right, after a quick reboot, I'm gonna click on my inventory. It's gonna take me into 2D view, and I'm gonna take a look at my mouse. You can see we have a filter stop, and that's what's causing our problem. If we do this as ignore it's going to ignore our mouse inside of this big old container it's basically cannibalizing our uh, mouse inputs if we hit control s we run this we add in an item we right click you can see entered sub object exited sub object awesome so now we just have to have it set up so that when we click we actually find that item so let's go over to our code here and let's basically go into our process and just check if over key item, then if input dot is action just pressed. And we will go ahead and check if our left mouse button down is pressed. And then we can emit our signal. So we'll type emit signal and we'll type signal name dot, and we'll pass in our found item for our found item event handler, and then comma, whatever we want to actually emit. And in our case, current item dot sub item. Now we actually should probably have a secondary item. So we can actually just pass this in and just go item, item to remove, that way we have a little bit more flexibility. So I'll probably just do this and then I'll probably just say current item. And I know that you technically don't need to admit both of these guys, but I'm gonna do it this way just cause it's a little bit easier. And also GD script is coming back to bite me a tiny bit. I forgot I need to put parentheses around that. And there we go. Now this is the Godot way to emit a signal. You can actually do it in the C sharp way. And I'll cover that either in a future video or a little bit later, we can talk about it. I generally prefer the way that C sharp does it over top of the way Godot does it, but we can have it like this for right now and go from there. Now we just have to connect our actual base scene to our signal. So we can come in here and when we do our spawn, we can basically just connect our found item signal to a function. So we could basically just say instance dot found item plus equals, and we can pass in some kind of function. In my case, I'm just gonna pass in a found 
item function, which doesn't yet exist, but we'll create one right now. So then we could just put in private void found item like that. And we could pass in item found item, item, item to remove. And then we can basically just show our object. So show object and we can pass in our, our found item like that. And that's going to show the object that we're trying to find. And then we need to go through and actually remove the item. So since this object is located in our inventory, we could just grab our parent. So inventory, inventory is equal to get parent like that as inventory. And then we can basically just remove it. So we can say inventory dot remove and we could pass in our item to remove like that. And we also need to add the original item as well. So we can come in here and go inventory dot add our found item. And there we go. So now we come back to Godot, we refresh our screen. If we've done everything correctly, we can click add item, right click, click. It'll show our capsule, we right click, and you will see that it looks like we have a double of something. Unfortunately, it's really hard for me to tell what either one is. So it looks like this didn't get deleted properly, but we did get our key added. So that's cool. This guy just didn't get deleted properly. So let's take a look as to why. So we are removing our item to remove from our inventory. Do I have duplicates of that item? I wonder if that's what's going on. Let me see. Quantity one, key, quantity one. So probably not, but we can check it out real quick. Click, right click. We got two, click, right click. Okay, so we have one and one. So I wonder if this is successfully removing the item. So let's gd dot print and let's print out the result of this removal of this item and let's see what happens if it succeeds or if it fails because thankfully we return a boolean of whether or not it succeeds so false so it failed so somewhere it died when it attempted to do its removal and i'm curious what that remove what that failure was so let's take a look at it Head over to our inventory script. Let's take a look at our remove. I wonder if my can afford is what's causing it. How much you want to bet there's a bug here where it can't remove it because the item quantity is greater or less than the I. Let me go into Visual Studio real quick and let me run through the code. And the reason why I'm choosing Visual Studio over VS Code is not because of some crazy, it's better in Visual Studio. It's more of just, I have it already set up for walking through code. So it's gonna make things a little bit easier. If I come up here, I'm gonna throw a breakpoint in here and I will run my profile. If you guys wanna know how to set this stuff up, go ahead and check out my debugging and C sharp with Godot 4 tutorial. Uh, if I remember, I'll link it in the description below. But let's hit add, right click, click, and we're gonna throw a breakpoint here. You can see that we are attempting to remove it. Let's hit down. Let's check our can afford. I'm guessing it's gonna be a no. Yes, and that's what it is. It's because item is not less than or equal to the amount. So we need to make sure that item dot quantity that we're removing is less than or equal to the amount that we are removing. So that's the reason why we're having that bug. So now that should work. As long as I save it, I go back to Godot and I hit play, that should fix it now. So if we click, we right click, we click, we right click, and there you go. Now it is removed. So if we right click on this guy, we're good to go. Now, if this is what you wanted, perfect. You guys are good to go. You guys can take off. But what if we wanted to keep both objects, right? What if we want to keep an object and the sub object? So if you had a key in a chest, what if you wanted to keep the chest? Or for instance, if you had a sword and inside the hilt was like, you know, a special dagger or something, we well, don't want to necessarily discard the sword, right? So how can we go about doing this without discarding the sword? So in order to do this, we actually need to come in to our item object here. 
And we basically need to add in that capability. So when you have this, <clears throat> you basically need to set it up to say, hey, should we delete this item after being found? So we'll just go in and say export and we'll say public bool delete item after found and we'll make that into a bool and we'll make that into a property. So get set. And while we're here, let's just go ahead and preemptively set up a base item as well. And I'll explain what this is in a second, but I'm gonna go with public item, base item. So we'll say get comma set comma. And basically what this is, is it's just like a third item that's considered a base item. Now I'm gonna build out these two features together just because it's gonna be a bit easier to set up for us. But basically when you find an item, a lot of times you need to actually put in that other item without the sub item, if that makes sense. So a lot of times people want to have, for instance, if you have a chest and it has a sub item inside of it, and then you have a second chest that has a sub item inside of it, and those two chests are stacked on top of each other. When you find one of the sub items inside of the chests, you should have one empty chest and one found item. And then you should have one of the combination of the two where it says, hey, I have a chest with an item in it. So that's basically what this is for. So technically we might not need this, but I'm gonna put it in just in case, but we might not need it. So what we'll do is we'll come over to our, our investigation base scene, and then we will come in here and say, okay, if we found our item, we're going to show our object. If our item to remove dot base item does not equal null, then we will add it. And again, GD script is kind of messing me up here. So we'll do that and we'll grab this little bit here. We'll cut that, put it up at the top and we'll say inventory dot add and we will add our item to remove dot base item and that'll basically allow us to have that base item removed and then we can remove our item to remove and then we can add our found item now that should just work so if we go into godot here and we come here and we grab our chest combined we duplicate it we change this to chest instead of chest dot combined if we double click on our chest, we will make our resource path chest and we will get rid of our sub item. And if we've done this correctly, as long as we set this item to an item ID that doesn't exist, which if we take a look for, I think our key might be five. Yep, so our chest needs to be six. We'll change it to our ID of six. And if we've done this correctly, in theory, we should be good. So we can click on our inventory, click play, add an item, right click. We have our two guys, we click, right click, and we just have one item, which is good. So that part kind of works. But now the question is, why did our other part not work? So let's take a look at our code here. Did I remember to save? Yes, I did. Show object, if item to remove dot base item does not equal null. Does my chest.combine have a base item? It does not, so that's my fault. So let's add that. So we'll add in our chest.tres like so. We're going to hit play and we will add an item, right click, click, right click, and we have both of them. So here we have just our chest and here we have just our cylinder. Awesome, so actually it looks like we don't need that other Boolean. I thought we would, but I don't think we do. Hey guys, Editor Mitch here. I almost forgot before I take off, there is something I'd like to do, which is make this into an actual module that people can use. So let's come up here, let's go to RES, let's go new folder, and let's just add an add-ons folder. Let's right click new folder, and then let's add in 
FP, which in my case is fine point, so that you guys can use my work for your guys' stuff. We're gonna add in another folder and I'm gonna call it inventory system. And then I'm gonna grab all of my inventory stuff and I'm just gonna drop it in there. So we're gonna come in here, grab our UI inventory stuff and drag those guys up here. We're gonna do the same thing for our scripts. So let's take a look at those. We have inventory and I believe that's it for this. So I'm gonna drag this guy up here, put that in there. I will do the same thing with my inspection object, my inventory button and all of my investigation code right here, my base scene, my item, and my utilities. And I'm gonna drag all these guys up here into my inventory system. Now this may break a bunch of your projects, so we'll probably need to do some adjustments here. We're gonna add in another new folder and I'm gonna call it scenes. And then I'm gonna add in another folder and call it scripts like that. And then I'm gonna grab my scenes right here, drag that guy in there, and I'm gonna grab all of these guys and drag them into there. That way we have a nice module that we can use. Now this is going to get committed into my Bitbucket GitHub that you guys can just download it and use it. Link will be in the description. But let's make sure that stuff didn't break. It probably did. Uh, Godot, Godot is not exactly good at handling um, these kinds of things. Providing that it's gonna let me actually click on it. You can see I've got another error here. So that's not great. But you can see that it says scene file seems invalid and corrupt. So that's going to be a good sign. So we're gonna have to fix that. This is one downside to doing this. Our inventory button works, our investigation base scene works, our inspection object works, but our inventory just seems like it's invalid or corrupted. So my guess is because it was open that Godot is getting mad. So let's go up here, let's go to our add-ons, scenes, inventory, and let me take a look at this. Uh, if I go into my source control, I should have a removed inventory.tscn. Let me just grab that because it was deleted. And I can go into my inventory and do that. And it's still mad at me. Let's close Godot. I'm gonna reboot it real quick. I'll be right back. And after a quick reboot, it looks like it fixed itself. It did get rid of our reference here of our um, stuff. So we're gonna need to clean that up. So if we come into our scripts, we drag our inventory.cs back on here and we put in our inspection investigation base scene in here. We hide that bad boy and we click on our script for investigation base scene. I think that will work. We click on our inventory here, control S. These guys are still hooked up, so we should be able to just hit play. If we're lucky, well, it didn't quite work, so we'll take a look at it in one second. Well, it looks like we ran into a small bug here since I reverted everything. So we'll come in here and we'll add in our, I believe it was inventory. Let me hover over this real quick. Menu, so we'll rename this like so. We're gonna grab these guys put them underneath it. That means that we're gonna also need to go underneath our inventory, change our mouse from filter to ignore to fix that issue again, because I reverted all of that code. So we'll come in here and we still have a bug. Can I open file RES uh, UI inventory button? That's because our button path has changed. So we'll grab that real quick. So we'll paste that in, control S, hit play. There we go, we can add an item, right click, click, right click, and we're back to where we were pretty much. We should be good. Anyway, back to the video. So that's basically all we need to do to set up a Resident Evil inspired investigation system. Now the next big thing with this investigation system is we're gonna do multiples of an object so if you have multiple sub objects, how we can handle that. And I would like to set up a crafting system within the horror game. I think that will be really useful. But that is all I have for you guys today. So if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. Hey, you know, if you dislike this video, go ahead and hit that dislike button because I am here to make content for you guys. This video was a viewer suggested video. So if you have any suggestions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll be more than happy to add it to my Trello board and try to get you a tutorial. I am still working on my 
3D character controller tutorial, I'm going to be adding in root motion and things like that next. So look forward to that. And hey, you know, if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments below or hit me up on Discord. Link is in the description. I'll be more than happy to help you out with any issues you might be having. But that is all I have for you guys today. So thank you so much again for watching. And I'll see you all next time. Thanks.